Hi, I'm Tom Scarpello of Revology Cars, and this is car number 184, a 1968 Mustang GT 2 Plus 2 Fastback Cobra Jet in Highland Green Metallic with black Napa leather interior. Today I'm going to take you on a walk around of this car, and we're going to go for a drive. Let's get started. Okay, 1968 Mustang GT 2 Plus 2 Fastback Cobra Jet. That's a mouthful. So this car, the Cobra Jet, we created by combining our 1968 Mustang GT with the supercharged engine from our 1967 Shelby GT500 and now 1968 Shelby GT500 KR. So the Cobra Jet keeps the appearance of the GT it's slightly different. Uh, you can tell from the exterior of the car by the hood. The raised hood is required due to the additional clearance that the supercharger needs. Um, we've got the nice little Cobra jet emblem on the hood, a subtle reminder to the guy sitting next to you at the stoplight that you better watch out for uh, you don't know what that guy has under his hood. This car is equipped with the uh, flush-mounted uh, hood, hood pins. Um, this car is unique because it has our 68B package, which emulates the design of a certain movie car. And um, it's also a Cobra Jet, so it's a bit unique. It doesn't have the painted hood uh, stripe as the standard Cobra Jet does because it's got the 68B package. So it's a bit, bit unique. At the side, this car has the 17 by 9.5 inch torque thrust wheels. They're with painted centers. Um, the tires are 275 40ZR17, so it's a lot of rubber, a very aggressive, hunkered down look. It really just looks muscular and badass, which just fits the whole Cobra Jet theme. Uh, I personally really I like it. Now, it's more tire than you need, honestly. The uh, 245s have plenty of grip, but if you just want to look badass, this is the way to go. The, uh, the rear of the car, the 68B package gives you the satin black painted tail lamp panel. Uh, it's uh, a very sinister look. The um, supercharged engines that, that we build have the uh, four inch Borla polished tips exiting from the rear valance. So it, uh, it's another tip off that you're not just dealing with a run-of-the-mill 68 Mustang. So here we are in the interior of car number 184. So this is the Porsche black Napa leather. Um, it's all leather, even the headliner, the rear cargo area, everything is covered in leather. Uh, the interior trim is the walnut. This is a genuine walnut veneer. It's laser cut. Uh, a very luxurious interior. This car is equipped with the optional leather-wrapped steering wheel, which is really nice. Th this is a really, it feels good. Um, it's really, this is a nice interior. I, I personally, I, I like sort of a simple. Okay, so here we go, car 184. So people ask me, uh, you know, of all the different models that we build, which one's my favorite? Honestly, I'm more of a fastback person than a convertible person. I mean, I, I like cruising around in a convertible as much as the next guy, but I prefer the, the look and just the, the driving characteristics of a enclosed car more than an open car. And uh, I do really like the uh, this this car, the 68 with the Cobra Jet engine, so it's just massively powerful, really hunkered down the you know the big wheels and tires and just really looks badass. It's just it's the epitome of the 60s muscle car. The cars that we build with supercharged engine are are quite a bit, bit different than the naturally aspirated cars. It's not just a case of bolting a supercharger onto an existing engine, there's a lot more to it than that. Now over time, the differences have um, 
become fewer because we've commonized parts where it was practical to do so. For example, all the cars we build now have the carbon fiber drive shaft. Originally, only our supercharged cars had the carbon fiber drive shaft. And, you know, the ex in reality, the aluminum drive shaft was capable of handling the power and torque of the supercharged engine, but we thought the carbon fiber drive shaft was a, a, a neat feature and kind of gave, um, you know, more differentiation to the supercharged uh, powertrain. But when we started running the cars with the carbon fiber drive shaft, we noted a couple of things. So first of all, there's uh, less impact harshness uh, at shifting. And that's because the carbon fiber shaft actually, it twists when, uh, when you shift and that absorbs some of that impact. So it just makes for just a slightly more refined um, drive line. And the other thing was, is we found that the carbon fiber shafts were much better balanced, I, or I should say more consistently balanced. We, we would have a fairly high number of aluminum drive shafts that were not properly balanced and needed to be taken out of the car and sent back to the supplier. So um, we went 100% carbon fiber since then. Uh, on the manual transmission cars, we used to use a twin disc plus. We used to use a twin disc clutch on the supercharged and a single disc on the naturally aspirated. Um, the twin disc obviously is more expensive. We now use the twin disc across the board. Uh, the main reason is um, there's a few reasons, but I think the main reason is the pedal effort is lower. So with the same clamping force you're able to have a lower pedal effort with the twin disc clutch so this makes the car a lot nicer to drive so that's common so there's still a lot of things that are different between the supercharged application and the naturally aspirated one um, the uh, first of all the entire front subframe is unique so we use an aluminum subframe it's a um, it's a more sophisticated uh, front suspension, um, more expensive. The aluminum subframe allows us to lower that, lower the engine slightly just to get that clearance that we need so that we can use, um, you know, in the case of the Shelby, a stock Shelby hood to maintain the integrity of that uh, exterior appearance. Um, it uh, also, though, it drives a very complex header packaging, so the headers are, are more difficult to make and therefore more expensive. Uh, it forces a um, external oil cooler system, so now you've got oil heat exchangers and um, uh, external um, mounted oil filter. Uh, you've got a larger radiator, dual fans, <coughs> Um, so there's there's a lot of things. It's it's not just bolting on a supercharger, uh, but you know we've been able to really optimize the package. It's uh, very reliable, very um, very streetable, drivable, and and it you know we we're always looking to come up with the best possible solution. Um, you know we're think very carefully about any content we put into the car. We don't add cost unless there's really a benefit. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, it, you, what we need to deliver is a car that it clearly great performance, fun to drive, but also a car you can live with and you could drive every day if you wanted to. It, it is, needs to be absolutely reliable, comfortable. That's, that's the thing. Continuous improvement, always looking for better ways to do things. Uh, focus on one thing, be the best. That's what we do.